All right, so this is gonna be the remote job tier list where I'm going to rank the most common remote jobs from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on any of these jobs because this video would be like an hour and a half long. I'm gonna keep it very short, very sweet. Of course, I have a lot of experience because I've helped tons of people get these types of jobs. And over the years, I've done a lot of research, I've gathered a lot of data, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from my students. So I think this is gonna be super helpful to you. I'm gonna go over a bunch of the most common ones. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of jobs that I don't go over because of the fact that, you know, the video would be like three, four, five, maybe even like 10 hours long if I went over every single remote job. But let's go ahead and get started with an obvious one, which is software developer. I think that everybody knows this is a really good job. It used to be even better. I mean, this basically used to be in a tier of its own. You're not on my level. You would never be on my level. Like a God tier job, basically. In the last year or so, it has cooled down a bit. There is a bit of a hiring freeze in technology. I do think it's going to recover nicely. It also used to be that 10 years ago, you could get a job as a software developer if you had a pulse. Now you actually do have to know your stuff, right? So whether you decide to go to college or self-teach or go to a boot camp or whatever, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you have to know your stuff in order to get that first entry level job. But with that being said, this one still pays about 105000 thousand dollars a year and I'm going to put it in S tier status. The next one on the list is one that a lot of people probably have never heard about and there's a bunch of random little healthcare related careers that you can do remotely that are really good. This is an entry level job and it's going to be medical coder. And basically you're going to be assigning different codes to medical treatments, procedures and diagnoses. Now this one does require a bit of training. Typically the company that hires you will train you and it pays about $49,000 a year. And when you add that to the the fact that the healthcare industry tends to be one of the most stable industries, that's pretty good, especially for an entry level job. So I'll put this one in B tier. The next one is a super common job that you probably hear about all the time if you've looked at different remote job videos. It's going to be transcriptionist. Now, if you're watching this from a non first world English speaking country, but you do have really good English and really good transcription skills, this might be great for you. But with that being said, if you're watching this from the US or another first world English speaking country, probably not the best just because of the fact that you're competing with a bunch of people who live in places that have low cost of living. But with that being said, transcriptionist is one of the easier jobs to land at the entry level. So if you really need to make some money right off the bat, there's a lot of opportunities for part-time jobs, freelancing, and eventually you can work yourself into a full-time role. And transcriptionists do make about $62,000 a year. So this can be good depending on kind of like the niche you go into. For instance, legal transcription tends to be higher paying. And there is a lot of opportunities out there, but with that being said, it is a bit of a brutal job. Job. You're basically just typing away for hours and hours on end. So overall, I'll give this one a C tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be entry level content creation roles in general. And I'm going to use the example of a podcast editor. Now, the thing about these types of roles is yes, you know, US companies could just outsource this to somebody from the Philippines or India, and they could do it a lot cheaper and easier than hiring someone from the US. But with that being said, with a lot of these types of editing roles like YouTube editor, podcast editor, etc., the best editor editors do tend to be from first world countries. And the reason for that is because they understand the culture. Most of your audience, if you're making content for a first world English speaking country, is going to be, you know, from a first world English speaking country. And so in order to edit properly to understand the culture, it's much easier if you've actually lived in the culture. So there is a lot of competition for low and even mid level editing, but for super, super high level editing, typically people are hiring from first world English speaking countries. But that does mean you have to be very, very good. So overall, I'll give these types of roles a B tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be a voiceover specialist. And this is another one where you see it a lot in these remote job slash side hustle type videos. And this is one where if you're from the US, literally just because you have a US accent, you are going to have an advantage. But with that being said, there is tons of demand here. You also have to be pretty high level when it comes to setting up audio. And a lot of the time, this is more of a freelancing type thing rather than being a full time remote job. But with that being said, voice actors do make about $68,000 a year. So I'll give this one a B tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be a sales representative. So this is just 
just a general sales representative, like you're, you know, selling phones or you're just selling something kind of low ticket. Now, I do think that sales jobs are awesome. I think that everybody should do at least one sales job throughout their lifetime. But with that being said, some of these kind of lower level sales roles are extremely brutal, like not very many people make it. But with that being said, if you're able to be successful here, you can make about $92,000 a year. But there are definitely certain niches that are going to be much better than others. And I'll go over those later in the video. So overall, I'm going to give this one a B tier rating as well. The next one on the list is going to be a network architect. And this is kind of a mid-level tech role. And typically people would start off in IT in order to get into this role. And by the way, I think the easiest way to start off in IT is to first get an IT help desk job. I've interviewed several people on the channel that have gotten IT help desk jobs. They didn't have any college degree or previous experience, and they were able to land the job in as little as seven days, believe it or not. And they were all able to do this because they took training from my friend Josh, and he does have a free course that will tell you everything you need to know about IT help desk. It'll probably answer all the questions you have about it. You can check that out down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. He also does offer a cohort based learning experience where you know, you'll be going through it with a bunch of other people, there'll be instruction. And if you want to check that out, you'll get $50 off of it. And I'll put that down in the description and the pinned comment as well. But this is a pretty good role, you make about $164,000 a year. And there's a bunch of these kind of mid level IT roles that are available, and they tend to pay really well. And a lot of them can be done remotely. So I'll give this one an A tier rating. The next one on the list is going to be a statistician. And there's a bunch of different careers you can go into. Typically, they are going to be data related, if you're good at this skill. And statisticians in general make about $85,000 a year. Now you can get into some of the lower level data roles without getting a statistics degree. But if you want to get into the higher level roles, they typically are going to require you to have a statistics, mathematics, or computer science degree. But with that being said, this one is still really good. I'll put it into A tier. The next one on the list is going to be a UX or UI designer. And this one is super popular because it basically pays you to do art. Now, some of the roles are going to be more analytical and some of them are going to be more creative and artistic. And it's really best to understand both sides. But as a UX designer, for instance, you make about $99,000 a year. So it pays really well. It is getting more and more competitive to get a job. You technically don't need to have a degree or previous experience, but you do need to have a killer portfolio and great skills. But if you want to get paid to do art in a job, this is one of the better ways to do it. So for that reason, I'll give this B tier status. The next one on the list that's a very common career that can be done remotely is going to be accountant. Now to become an accountant, you do have to have a college degree. There is a role that's somewhat similar to accounting where you don't have to have a college degree, which is called bookkeeper. And that's another one that you can get into relatively easily. So I guess I'll just kind of clump those two together because they're both in the same tier anyways. But accountants make about $58,000 a year. There's lots of remote jobs available, and it is a steady, stable career. So for that reason, I'll put it into A tier status. Bookkeeper is around the same. I'll put it into A tier as well. The next one on the list is going to be one that I think is actually really underrated because it's so easy to get into at the entry level. I've literally seen like 16 year olds getting jobs in this without any experience, any college degree, any skills whatsoever. And that is going to be customer service representative. Now, is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? Probably not. But is it a great entry level job to get your foot in the door and get your first bit of experience? And it's actually remote in many cases. Yes, it is. And this is another one where you literally have an advantage because of your accent. If you're an American or if you're British or Canadian, a lot of companies that sell higher tier products do like to hire people with a first world English speaking accent. But if you're from a country like the Philippines or India, this could be a good opportunity as well. Now in the US customer service representatives make about $38,000 a year. And over Overall, I'm going to put this one into B tier status, and I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of people complaining about this in the comments down below. But the truth is, it is a pretty good place to start. And you'll get thick skin because you'll have to deal with Karens all the time. The next one on the list is another very common type of remote job. And this is one that I really don't like as much. And that is data entry specialist. Now, the reason I don't like this one very much is because it's honestly very easy to outsource this position to another country. And so the pay for this one is just getting lower and lower 
for Americans. Now you do make about $37,000 a year if you're able to get a job, but this is one where there's not much upward mobility, right? I mean, what are you gonna move into from data entry specialist? Whereas with customer service, you could become a customer success manager. You could do customer service with a tech company and then move up into different positions. There's actually a decent amount of opportunities for you. With data entry, it doesn't have nearly as much upside and it's incredibly tedious and boring work. But with that being said, it is a relatively easy remote job that you can land. So overall, I'll put this one into D tier. The next one on the list is going to be data analyst. And this is one of the lower level data positions that you can go into. And data is incredibly valuable. So I'm actually going to just clump this in with all data related jobs. So data is just super valuable right now. It's more valuable than oil or gold. So if you can learn these skills, you are basically set. And like I said, you can get into this without a college degree or previous experience, but you do need to have skills and a good portfolio. And as a data analyst, you'd make about $70,000 a year. Plus there are tons of positions that you can move into where you can make up to $300,000 a year or more. So this one is definitely going into S tier. The next one on the list is going to be a website developer. So this is one that was super hot about 10 years ago. I will say it's one of the easier, you know, software developer type jobs to get into and to learn. But with that being said, this is one of the more saturated ones too. Website developers make about $79,000 a year. You can definitely get into it without a college degree or previous experience, but you do have to have a good portfolio and skills. But like I said, there's a ton of competition here. It is somewhat saturated. So it's getting harder and harder to land a job. But overall, if you're able to land a job, this is a great way to get your foot in the door as a developer, and you can move into better positions down the line. So I'm going to put this one into A tier. The next one on the list is a financial advisor. Now this is one where you do need a college degree in finance. You also need to get the necessary licenses, but if you're able to make it, this pays about $110,000 a year, and it can definitely be done remotely. And there's quite a few other finance related careers that would fall under this category and they do tend to be pretty intense so this is not a career you want to go into if you're the type of person who wants kind of like a chill job but with that being said there's a lot of opportunities i'll put this one in a tier the next one is going to be mid-level management technology related roles such as it manager of course you do have to have previous experience and some positions may prefer someone with a college degree but with that being said you make about hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year and overall it can be a great opportunity so i'm a big fan of technology related careers in general i'll put this one into s tier the next one on the list is going to be a writer now writing careers in general are a bit saturated this is why it is so incredibly important that you specialize in something so you don't want to just be a writer you want to be a youtube script writer and you probably don't even want to just be a youtube script writer you want to be a youtube script writer in a specific niche so for instance a personal finance youtube script writer and there are going to be a lot of opportunities as long as you specialize and no chat gpt is not going to take all the writers jobs it's just going to increase the barrier to entry to what is considered good writing because i know from experience i've used it extensively chat gpt can help you write good content but if you just use chat gpt on its own it's going to write low level or mid-level content at best so it's definitely not going to take the jobs away from writers who can write high level content and this is why it's good to specialize in a specific type of writing and specialize further in a specific niche so you can understand what's happening in the niche you can make little jokes about something that's like a meme in the niche for instance this is something that chat gpt is not able to do and probably will never be able to do so overall this one is pretty competitive there are opportunities kind of at the entry level there are also a lot of opportunities when it comes to freelancing, part-time work, full-time work, etc. But the truth is the reason most people think this isn't a good career is because they don't specialize enough. But overall, writers make about $51,000 a year. And I think this one can be even better if you specialize, but I'll put it into B tier. The next one is going to be an online marketer, but it's not going to be digital marketing. So you're going to be working remotely as a marketer, but you're not going to be doing digital marketing. I hope that makes sense. So maybe you're helping to design like TV ads, for instance. And this one is still relatively good, although I think digital marketing is just much, much better. And the reason for that is because with digital marketing, you can actually track what your ROI is. Whereas with traditional types of marketing, most of the time, you're just kind of hoping that over a long period of time, it grows your brand awareness and you end up making more money from it. So overall, I'm going to put this one into B tier. The next one on the list is going to be a more and more common career, which is becoming incredibly valuable because the content creator industry is getting so much bigger and it's happening incredibly incredibly fast. And that is going to be a social media manager. So these are the people who are behind the tweets, the people who are running the Instagrams and the people who are creating viral Facebook posts and social media managers make about 
$51,000 a year. Now, one thing I like about this one is it's actually better for you if you're young. And the reason for that is because typically marketers will actually go after a younger demographic. And it makes sense because if you're able to get somebody, you know, addicted to your product, for instance, at a young age, that means you're going to make way more money from them because they're going to be using your product throughout a lifetime. All you have to do is look at movie franchises such as you know, Disney movies or Star Wars movies, etc. There's people who started watching Star Wars in the 1970s that are now older and they watch the new Star Wars movies. So they're able to make a ton of money off of that. And the reason for that is because it is a bigger lifetime value for a customer. And older people didn't really grow up with social media, so they don't understand fully how it works. Whereas younger people sort of just get it. So a lot of the time for these social media positions, they are hiring younger people. And that gives you a huge advantage if you're young watching this. So you definitely do not need a college degree or previous experience to land this role. And overall, I'm gonna put it into A tier. The next one on the list is actually one of my favorite careers. And I think it's really making a comeback. And that is going to be an online tutor. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can teach English to people across the world, but that tends to be relatively saturated. Like a lot of people are doing that right now. Still can be pretty good, but I think there's a lot of other tutoring opportunities that people are overlooking. For instance, you could tutor people on a very niche, specific test that you have taken in your past. So instead of getting paid like $10 an hour, you can charge something more like 50 or $100 an hour. Now, this is one that of course you can get into at the entry level without a college degree, but it depends on what you're tutoring for, of course, but it all comes down to specialization, making sure that you're tutoring for something that is valued. And this is also one that you can kind of do as a freelance type thing. You could do it part-time, full-time, or even start your own business. And this one kind of holds a special place in my heart because it's one of the first ways that I was able to make really good money when I did this in college. So overall, you're going to make around $38,000 a year as a tutor. This is a great one, for instance, if you're in college right now and you just want to make a little bit of extra money on the side. I want to put this one into A tier, and I think you definitely can get it to A tier if you specialize enough. But the truth is most people are going to be just teaching and tutoring very basic stuff. So for that reason, I'll put it into B tier. The next one on the list is going to be a virtual assistant. And this is one that I think is probably best if you live outside of a first world English speaking country. But with that being said, there are some opportunities for virtual assistants within the United States, for instance. You could become a virtual executive assistant, and that's where you kind of just field emails, field calls, et cetera, for an executive or a CEO. And as a virtual assistant, you'd expect to make about $46,000 a year. So this one is decent. It's not amazing. I'll put it into C tier. The next one on the list is going to be one of my favorites, and that is digital marketing. And this is not really a career. It's more of an umbrella term. So for instance, you could work in SEO, which is search engine optimization. You could work in PPC, which is pay-per-click. You could also work as a copywriter, you could build funnels. You could work for a newsletter. There's so many different ways that you could do digital marketing. And it doesn't require a college degree or previous experience you can get into these roles at the entry level. And as a digital marketer, you would expect to make about $68,000 a year. Typically at the entry level, it would start off around 40 to 60,000. And it also tends to be one of those jobs that a lot of people end up sticking to. So people actually really enjoy their digital marketing jobs. And it also tends to be relatively chill and it appeals to a broad range of different personalities. Out of all the careers that I recommend, I think this is the one where the most people end up liking it. And on top of that, there's lots of higher level roles you can move into where you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So for that reason, this one clearly has to go into S tier. The next one on the list is one I mentioned earlier in the video, and that is IT help desk. So this is the best entry level role, in my opinion, to make it into the technology industry. The only other one that kind of competes with this is tech sales, but that's more of a business type role that happens to be in the tech industry. So a lot of people come to me and they're like, I don't want to go to college, but I want to work in the tech industry. What job should I try to go for? And this is typically the job that I recommend. The easiest way to get your foot in the door in the tech industry is IT help desk. And in this position, you'd expect to make about $53,000 a year. So this one, absolutely goes into S tier. And the next one is one I just talked about, which is tech sales. This one is technically really easy to get into as well. And it is the technology industry, but it's more of a business type role because of course you're going to be selling products or services. And those products or services do happen to be technology related. Now the entry level role for this is known as BDR or SDR, which stands for business development representative or sales development representative. And in those roles, you'd probably make about $70,000 a year. And a higher level tech 
tech role, you'd make it up to around $140,000 a year. And I even interviewed someone on this channel, Antoine, who made it up to over $500,000 a year. So you can make incredibly good money with this. So overall, this one clearly goes into S tier as well. Now, if you like this one, check out the video I did on 21 highest paying remote jobs. And you can check that out by clicking right here.